Well, that doesn't look terribly impressive, does it? But it's all uh, basically primed and pre-shattered. I used uh, NATO Black and Hall Red Tamiya, and I use lacquer thinner. Just plain old cheap Rio Chem lacquer thinner. I think this is four or five bucks. No, well, not quite a liter. They're jamming us out of a full liter. But anyway, it's a considerably cheaper. Um, that big bottle is about a quarter of the price of a 200 mil uh, bottle of Tamiya thinner, and it works great. I really like using the lacquer thinner. It cleans up well. It sprays nice, dries quick. But uh, there's the pre uh, pre shading, and the basically, you know, you want to say pre shading slash um, priming for this. I'm going to be using Tamiya's XF26 Deep Green. It should look really, it should look pretty good on this. I've looked through, like I said, there's tons of different colors on this, so I'm just going to go with that deep green. And so next time you see this, guys, it's going to be uh, sprayed off. All right, there she is, all sprayed up in the uh, Tamiya Deep Green. It's got a little bit of a light um, highlight over the top, which is the deep green mixed with a little bit of deck tan, just to uh, uh, fade it out. This is going to be in, the, in a jungle scene, so it's going to be need a little bit of paint fade. I remember these were most of these vehicles were taken right out of the depot and sent over over to Africa, so um, you know you don't need to beat them all up a lot. One thing I've noticed, uh, I painted the um, these wheels separately and then put them back together, and then most of the uh, uh, the Tamiya paint uh, peeled right off this uh, rubber. So probably need to give give that another shot, or I'll probably just uh, do it up as a chip and paint and weather the hell out of it. But there it sits um, in all its glory, painted. It looks a lot uh, a lot better painted up. It's still a funky looking thing. So like I said, I'm going to put this in Belgium colors. And uh, there's not, not very many decals. And uh, basically just a metric white designation and um, a squad markings. And that's about it. So there you have it, guys. Um, next time you see this, she's going to have some weathers. I'm going to start getting into the weathering. And uh, we're going to see some, uh, some wheels on it. All right, thanks, guys. Later. Hey guys, we're back on this pan hard. So what we've done here is I've given it a gloss coat of Future, and then I did a pin wash with the uh, MIG Products Dark Wash. That was just in all the, the little crevices and the creases and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, shot a coat of um, flat Vallejo varnish on it, and then I gave it a filter of the um, gray for bright green. Um, a MIG filter on that, which seemed to work out fairly well. Now remember, this this um, this particular pan hard is going to be placed in Africa um, in the mid 60s. So this is a fairly new production vehicle. We're not going to see a whole bunch of uh, paint distress. We will see a lot of dirt and mud and grime, but I'm not going to get too crazy on the chipping and the and the rusting. Even though it's going to be set in uh, Guinea Basso, you know, Portuguese Africa. It's not going to see a whole bunch of paint distress, just a lot of dirt and grime and muck and rain marks and all that. I did do a little bit of um, paint chipping around the hull, or around the uh, cupola there, and uh, a little bit of fading. I'm going to break out the pastels here in a bit and do a little bit of light fading on that. But other than that, we're just about to um, mix up some uh, pumice there, as you've seen the white pumice, and some Vallejo pigment. And we're going to start putting some mud on it and start working on this undercarriage. All right, so what we've done here is we've mixed up some mud uh, using um, MIG pigments, European dust, Gulf War sand, dark mud, and some Vallejo uh, natural sienna. So we've got that all under the undercarriage. We've done the same to all the wheels and the, and the metal wheels. Done those all. Got them all ready to go. So I've just got to do a little bit of a wash now on some of the bright green pieces that haven't didn't get any mud. I'll just mix up some of the pigments with a little bit of a uh, little bit of thinner for washes, and we'll slash that on. And uh, we've just about got the mud done. Now on the turret, what we've done is you'd used some uh, MIG um, pigments uh, Allied Green fading, and that's really given the um, the turret a really nice faded out, dirty look. Now remember, these a lot of these vehicles were done up in a, in a semi-gloss green, right from the factory in the in the in the 60s. So you don't need to get it. I'm not going to do a lot of paint um, of paint weathering. It's more going to be mud and grime and muck, and some water streaking and all that good stuff. 
Well, there she is, guys. She's pretty much completed up. This is a little bit of a different um, weathering system than I normally do. Normally, I do a lot of uh, post shading, pre shading, a lot of paint weathering on my, uh, especially my World War II armor. This one I stick with just strictly um, pigments and washes. So uh, it's it's different for this is a different look for me from what I normally do. I, I don't mind it um, for what it is. You know, basically, brand fairly new vehicle plopped down in Africa during the colonial wars there in Africa in the 60s. Um, so this is going to be Portuguese version. I've got some figures out. So uh, there it is. Once it's all done, I'll get the figures mounted on. I've gone old school, and this is the... I'm going to use the old, old, from the early 70s, the Tamiya Vietnam uh, uh, U.S. Armored Troop Set. So we're going to have one guy there, and then uh, another fellow up top here like this. And we're going to swap the heads out. We're going to be carrying... Um, the Portuguese used uh, G3s, made in Spain. So that's what they'll be carrying. Uh, we'll have a little bit more animation. The guys will be looking off to probably towards the camera. But um, like I said, I want to keep it fairly simple for weathering. Just a lot of dust and dirt and mud. Because basically that's these were fairly new vehicles um, sent out on colonial duty. So there wasn't a lot of paint wear while they were there. Of course, if had I... Um, Decided to put this in, say, the late 1970s, left in Africa, it would have been beat right up. But I chose to do it during the colonial wars, so these vehicles were virtually like new condition. So there it is, guys. Uh, once this is all done up, I'll post a lot nicer. I'll do a slideshow on it, and it'll look a lot better. But uh, there she is. Overall, uh, the few little gl little few little glitches on this model. I'm probably going to end up giving this about an eight out of 10 on buildability and likability. It's funky, it's different, it's ugly as sin, but it's a really cool model to add to your collection. So if you can find it on sale, go snag it. I think I paid under 40 bucks for this one, Canadian. So it's a good one. Take a look at it, guys. And so um, next time you see this, it'll be on a slideshow all done up on the base. Thanks for watching, guys. Later. So there's the uh, Armored Car Commander, the Portuguese uh, millet camouflage of the 1960s and early 70s. Uh, I'm not sure. That's focusing up pretty good. I found a fellow online, uh, the Painting Clinic. I haven't painted a figure this good in years. Well, maybe ever. I uh, went through his tutorial and it turned out awesome. So that's the first of the uh, uh, painted figures for, that, uh, for the Panhard. And uh, he turned out really awesome. He's from the uh, very, very old... Uh, to me a set with um, British armored troop heads. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what resin heads they are, what uh, what brand, what company, but they had the beret like the Portuguese Special Forces guys did, so I used them. So yeah, he's looking good. I got two more figures to finish up and then that armored car will be done. Alright, there's one of the, there's the second figure in this little vignette. It's actually, he turned out really nice. Um, I found my old set of Italeri modern weapons and thankfully there are three G3s left in that set. So the Portuguese in the 60s used the uh, 7.62 or the 308 um, G3 manufactured by H&K but I believe the ones the Spanish had were, or the Spanish, sorry, the Portuguese used were a um, licensed copy of the Spanish G3 with the uh, green furniture uh, painted um, black receiver and packerized, parkerized barrel and magazines. Now if you're a gun guy like I am, you'll notice something really missing on this gun. There's no sling. And uh, pictures that I've gone through of these um, the Portuguese Special Forces guys, I would say up to 50% of these guys did not have slings on the rifles. I don't know why you wouldn't have a sling on your rifle, but there were maybe I want to say one in four, maybe one in ten actually had slings on the G3s. So he's done. He turned out, painted up not too bad. I'm kind of happy with him. Look a lot better once he gets up on the uh, on the uh, panhard. But we'll, two down, one to go. Alright guys, my panhard EBR10 is all done. 
It's set in about 1965 in uh, Mozambique in Africa during the Portuguese uh, colonial wars. These are colonial uh, Portuguese uh, infantry special forces armed with the uh, G3 rifle. So all in all I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. The base is just some uh, cellu-clay and spackle with a little bit of um, Vallejo uh, steel water on it. This is one of the many swamps in Mozambique that they patrolled through. Uh, it would go in the dry season from a dry arid to a wet season to uh, a muddy muckland. So that's kind of what I've what I've shown here as a, is a old um, you know hardly used trail. But the Panhard is um, out patrolling with a couple of these um, troopers on each side providing security and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, the weathering is a little different uh, from what I'm used to. Normally I'm more of a paint guy. This is weathered just strictly with pastels, um, MIG pigment, Vallejo and MIG pigments. Uh, it's okay, it's not my favorite weathering job, but all in all I'm, I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. I'm really happy with these figures. These figures are the old uh, Tamiya modern infantry set with uh, resin heads from, I'm not sure if they're Hornet or some other company. They're actually from British tankers. But I really like the looks of the faces and uh, the heads. And uh, the G3 rifles just set it right off. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So uh, this is my first vignette in probably about two years. I've been off. Kind of lost the creative juices here. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out for my first for my first go in a couple of years. So you'll see more here a lot more. I've kind of got the old creative juices flowing again which is really awesome. I've got about three dioramas in the work and a couple more uh, tanks ready to go. Sorry, that's my uh, dryer that you hear in the background. I'm relegated to the basement. It's uh, about minus 22 outside right now, so just a little bit too cold for my little heater in the garage. So we're down in the basement hole for now. So anyway guys, thanks for coming along. I'm um, watching this build. It's uh, turned out pretty good. My second posting here on uh, Alberta Scale Model, and I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, later.